Welcome back to another episode of Warren Cali. In this episode, I'm going to detail the story of Sacramento rapper, Sibo. Sibo was born Sean Thomas on January 14th, 1972, and would grow up in Sacramento, California. Sibo's mom would have him at the age of 15 years old, so growing up, he would see a lot and go through a lot of hard times. With his mom being artistic, being a singer, and into poetry, he would always have music in his life and develop a strong interest into rap. But growing up in Sacramento in the 80s, Sibo would start getting into the life of crime, first getting his first run-in with the law at the age of 11, with him getting caught stealing and receiving probation. This would start his long life of crime, and by 7th grade, Sibo would drop out of school. Sibo would eventually join a gang in his neighborhood, the 29th Street Garden Block Crips. The Garden Block Crips have been around since the 80s and have three cliques under the Garden Block Crip umbrella, being 29th Street, 24th Street, and 21st Street. The Garden Blocks will be one of the few Crip gangs in Sacramento, which is more of a blood-dominated city. Compared to now, Sacramento politics were a lot different in the 80s and the 90s. In the present day, the Garden Block Crips are cool with certain blood gangs, but back in the day, they were beefing with gangs like the Detroit Bloods, the Old Park Bloods, and the Medivy Bloods, among many others. Sibo will grow up in that crazy era of a non-stop war, but just so happens, Sibo's little brothers, they will join a rival gang, being the Medivy Bloods. In current times, the Garden Block Crips and the Medivy Bloods are not at war, but in the 80s and the 90s, this was a full-fledged war. By 14 years old, Sibo would be in and out of juvenile hall and camp, but eventually, he would be sent to Youth Authority for drug possession. Sibo would get out of Youth Authority in 1991 and go back to the streets and start hustling. Sibo would be hanging around another Garden Block Crip rapper from 24th Street named Brother Lynch. They would go around Sacramento battling other rappers, but with Sibo happen to go on a run, he would go to Vallejo and he would meet other rappers like Little Bruce and E-40. They would tell him he was talented and then he would start taking rap serious. By 1993, Sibo would release his first album called Gas Chamber. This would be a charting album and would be a success, being the first major artist in the rap in Sacramento to bring notice to the city. In 1994, Sibo would drop an EP called Autopsy. This was also a charting album and had features from other future NorCal rap legends like Keith the Sneak. This will only be an EP with him going to jail. In 1995, Sibo dropped Tales from the Crypt, which was a high charting album with singles like Birds in the Kitchen as the lead single. That same year, he will also drop the best of Sibo. In 95, Sibo will be introduced to Tupac after Tupac was a fan of his music and wanted him to go to California Love video shoot where they would first meet. Tupac and Sibo would later build a good relationship, and Tupac would feature him on his classic album, All Eyes On Me. Sibo would do songs trading war stories, and ain't hard to find. Tupac would have interest in signing Sibo as well. In 96, Sibo would go to prison over a situation over a shootout at his video shoot. He would have a video shoot in Metaview with his homies, but with his brother being from Metaview and him knowing most of the Metaview bloods who came up to the video shoot, he thought the situation wouldn't end bad. But with bad blood on each side, the video shoot went left. Sibo would fire his gun in the air to clear the crowd, but this would lead to a Metaview blood shooting a reputable Garden Block Crip named Big Cue Ball and killing him. The situation would put Sibo at odds with his own gang, with some people blaming him for the death of Cue Ball. But this would lead to him receiving a year in prison as well for firing his gun in the air. Sibo would be cellmates with 24th Street Garden Block rapper X Rated. X Rated was in prison for the murder of a Metaview blood member's mom. While doing his year bid, he will find out in prison that Tupac died, ending any hope that he was signing with Tupac. After getting out of prison, Sibo dropped the album One Life to Live in 1997, which was a charting album, and in 98, he dropped Till My Casket Drops, which was also successful. He was later then approached by Master P to sign with No Limit Records, but this situation would never work out. By 99, he would drop his album, the final chapter on his own record label, West Coast Mafia Records. He will also present the Mob Figure group on his label that same year. Mob Figures feature rappers like FedEx, AP9, Hustler, Roddy J. Clyde, the deceased Bay legend, The Jacker. In 2000, Sibo dropped the album, Enemy of the State. Both albums would chart. In the 2000s, Sibo would be active in music, dropping several albums like Life as a Rider, Desert Eagle, The Mob Father, and Money to Burn. He will also drop collaborative albums with Spice One, Yuck Mouth, Killer Tay, San Quinn, Little Flip, and Brother Lynch. Sibo would even drop 11 compilation albums and 5 mixtapes, and one being on Young Buck's label, Cashville Records. 
and the 2010s, Sibo wouldn't be as active in his music as he was in the 2000s, but he still dropped a ton of music. In 2011, he dropped West Side Riders. In 2012, he dropped Trilogy. In 2013, Sibo dropped I Am Gangsta Rap. In 2014, OG Chronicles. And in 2015, The Mob Father 2. But by 2017, Sibo would get into a rap beef at the time, a rising rapper in Sacramento named Mozzie, after his comments in an interview on No Jumper. In the interview, Mozzie insinuated that he put Sacramento on and he brought light to the city. Where Sibo and Brother Lynch felt disrespected by his comments, they felt he didn't pay respect to his elders and that they were the rap pioneers in SAC. Of Sacramento rappers, you know, something that. Yeah, I heard of them. You know, that, that you initially started. Um, I mean, number one, what do you think about Mozzie? I don't. I used to. I was proud of him. But then he, he, he just wasn't willing to, like, give props to the old school. He's just like, I guess he's the new who put sack on the map. But I used to, I used to be proud of him, though. Okay, but you feel like he, he doesn't pay uh, homage to the OGs? I don't, he, don't need to, he don't need to pay homage, but acknowledge, that's all. I don't need no homage. I paid mine on my own without help. But Mozzie wouldn't care about that. With Sibo and Brother Lynch being from rival hoods, this would lead to a lot of back and forth on the internet. This would eventually lead to Mozzie making a diss song called New Era King. In the song, he dissed Garden Black Dead Homies, he dissed Brother Lynch, and he dissed Sibo. Mozzie even would be dissing several other rivals from several other gangs. Sibo would quickly respond with his own diss two weeks later called Body for Body. And Body for Body, he would diss Mozzie and discredit Mozzie as a gangster and diss Old Park several times. Sibo would later be doing a video shoot and once again in Sacramento in the Meadowview area. Many South Sacramento gang members from rappers and Blood and Crip members would come to the video shoot, like Mozzie's other rival, CML. But this would lead to a video shoot being shot up and a man losing his life. That shooting victim from this weekend's shooting was holding a vigil. 49-year-old father Ernie Cadenio was killed when shots rang out Sunday afternoon at a popular Sacramento neighborhood park. He was working hard. He did what he could for his daughter you know, and his girlfriend and baby to come. Cadenio was spending the day at Meadowview Park while his friend Sibo, a well-known Sacramento rapper, was filming a music video. The artist had announced his video shoot on Instagram, writing, Let's go, Sacktown. OGs will be outside. It's a sad, senseless shooting that shouldn't happen. Mozzie's affiliates would later be arrested, and they would say Mozzie was the reason behind the shooting, but Mozzie would never be charged. Many of the affiliates would later start snitching and telling on each other. Sibo would do several interviews about his career and his beef with Mozzie after, and even drop an album in 2017 called The Problem. In 2018, he dropped a tape called My Father, The John Gotti Pack, and his last tape in 2019 called Animal. Since then, Sibo hasn't dropped much music, only releasing around five singles since his last album. He's still doing a few interviews, and his main focus has been writing scripts and working with other artists, and also being a family man. Sibo's career didn't pan out like he and others thought it would, but he'll still go down as a pioneer of Sacramento rap. This will conclude this episode. If you haven't already, make sure you check out my previous episodes. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.